Hello and welcome to the AWS Certified Data Analytics Specialty Course, DIS C01. My name is Stefan Merek and I'm thrilled to be presenting this course with my co-instructor Frank Hain. So we're going to prepare for the Data Analytics Specialty Exam or DIS C01 and it's a very challenging certification. The exam is really hard but this course will prepare you well. It will be long and interesting. It's definitely recommended for you to have previous AWS knowledge on EC2 and networking, but if you hold an AWS associate certification level, then you will be great. So AWS certified solutions architect or AWS certified developer. It's preferred to also have some data and analytics background to help you alongside this course. We will cover all the services you need to know for the exam. And finally, take your time with this course. This is not a race. So my certification, I passed it with 94% and that used to be when it was called Big Data Specialty, so BDS C00, but it has been renamed to Data Analytics Specialty DAS C01. And it's actually very, very similar content. We've updated the course to add the extra content that was needed. So don't worry, this course covers everything on both the previous certification and the newer certification. So a little bit about me. I'm Stefan and I've been teaching for over three years to almost 300,000 students around the world. I've worked as an IT consultant, a big data architect, a developer, and a sysops. And I worked with AWS for so many years. I built websites, applications, streaming platforms, big data platforms, and so on. I've been teaching AWS for a while. I teach about certification, cloud formation, Lambda, EC2. So hopefully you are in good hands. You can find me on LinkedIn if you want to connect professionally. Instagram if you want to get more behind the scenes update and see when I meet students. Twitter, Medium, and GitHub are also other ways to connect with me. Over to you, Frank. And I am Frank Kane. I spent nine years working at Amazon.com itself, started off there as a senior software engineer and worked my way up to senior manager. While I was there, I focused on machine learning and recommender systems and everything at Amazon involved big data. We had data on what everybody bought, what everybody looked at, and we had to apply all that at massive transaction rates too. So big data was kind of in our DNA. These days, I'm the owner of Sundog Education, which is a training company specializing in big data and machine learning education online. And as you can see on Udemy alone, I've reached over 200,000 students so far. You'll find me on the following social links on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. And I will see you about halfway through this course as we dive into the processing, analysis, and visualization domains of the exam. So I'll see you guys later. So what are we going to learn in this course? Well, the answer is obviously a lot. We have over 25 services to learn. I didn't show them to you all here, and I won't read them one by one to you. We have all the course for that, but they're divided into six sections. We have the collection, storage, processing, analysis, visualization, and finally security section. So a lot of things to learn, but the good news is that Frank and I will take our time and teach you everything you need to know to pass the exam. So let's get started with this course. I'm Frank Kane, and throughout this course, I'll be guiding you through building a real big data system using many of the AWS services covered on the big data and data analysis certification exams. Let me introduce you to the case study we'll build as we go through this course together hands-on using your own AWS account. We're going to imagine that we're working for a huge e-commerce company called Kadabra.com, as in the magic word abracadabra. Coincidentally, this was Jeff Bezos' original name for Amazon.com. He changed it after someone told him it sounded a little bit too much like cadaver. But it's a good enough name for us. An e-commerce company involves many, many systems. And for a company of this size, they all need to handle massive amounts of data. We're going to work through six different requirements for building up cadaver.com and build them together as we progress through the course. The first requirement is to offer an order history function on the site's mobile app. To do this, we'll simulate order data being generated on an EC2 instance and publish that data using Kinesis data streams into an AWS Lambda function, which in turn will populate an order database in DynamoDB that our app can read from. It might not make sense now, but it will as we progress through the first half of the course and build this up as we go. We also want to present automated product recommendations to our customers online, which involves training a machine learning model based on aggregate customer purchasing data. To build this, we'll publish our order data through Kinesis Firehose into a data lake hosted in Amazon S3, and spin up an Amazon Elastic MapReduce cluster to produce a recommendations model using Apache Spark. Next, we'll create an operational system that alerts us if an unexpected rate of orders comes in all of a sudden. This might indicate some sort of attack that someone needs to deal with immediately, and so it must work in real time. To build this, we'll use Kinesis Data Streams and Kinesis Data Analytics to monitor our incoming orders, 
and use a Lambda function to fire off alarms using Amazon SNS to your cell phone when something unusual happens. We also want to be able to analyze server log data in near real time for operational purposes. For this requirement, we'll use Kinesis Firehose to pump Apache log data directly into the Amazon Elasticsearch service, where we can easily query that data and build dashboards for it using Kibana. Finally, we'll cover the data warehousing and visualization that we need for business analysis purposes by using AWS Glue, Athena, Redshift, and QuickSight on top of our S3 data lake. All five of these requirements fit together into one huge system, which you'll build by the end of this course. You'll find that success on the exam requires more than just studying materials. It requires real hands-on experience and an understanding of how all these services can work together to solve larger problems. Our objective is to give you some of that hands-on experience as you work your way through this course. So let's dive in and start learning and building our way to a better understanding of big data and data analysis on AWS. Hey, just a few quick tips on how to use Udemy's user interface to get the most out of this course while you're taking it. First of all, if you have any questions while you're taking this course, go ahead and hit the Browse Q&A button here at the bottom of any lecture, and that will bring up the Q&A window for this lecture. And there's a good chance that whatever your question is has already been asked by somebody else and already answered. So you can browse through previous questions associated with this lecture here. And if you do have a new question, just hit the Ask a New Question button, type in a title in as much detail as you can. And Sundog Education does have a staff of people who monitor this every day. So you will get a response back within 24 hours if you post a new question here. Also, if English is not your first language or if you're in a noisy environment where it's hard to hear and keep up with what I'm saying, as you're playing videos, there is a speed control here you can use. By default, it's 1x, but you can slow that down to 0.75x or even half speed if you want to, or you can speed it up if you just want to go faster too. So remember that's at your disposal. Also, you can also bring up a transcript here that actually has the actual text of what I'm saying, so you can follow along there as well. Or alternatively, you can hit the captions button, the CC here, select your language, and that will actually have captions for you that actually let you follow along in text with what I'm saying as well, so that can help reinforce what you're hearing too. Very handy tools there. If you're having any trouble with the streaming of the videos, click up the gear icon here and you can select different resolutions. Auto is usually the best choice, but you can actually slow that down or uh, make that a lower resolution if you need to in order to make sure that it streams more efficiently. Also, don't be taken aback if you see a prompt from Udemy to rate this course very early on. If you're just not ready to leave a rating yet, there is a Ask Me Later button there at the bottom that you can hit, and you can come back to it later on. Uh, please hit that button if you're not ready. Don't just hit some random star rating to dismiss the window, because every rating counts, and it really impacts my ability to make more courses for you in a very direct manner. So please leave an honest review when you're prompted, and you're always welcome to update that review by editing it from the course dashboard as well. I hope those are some useful tips for you for getting the most out of this course, so let's get back to the course itself. So before we get started with this course, I just want to give you a disclaimer that this course will cost you money. Some money you need to basically practice, mainly on Kinesis Analytics and Kinesis, the ML service as well. So basically, you should plan for $10 for this course, and we're going to learn right now how to set a budget so you make sure you don't go over these $10 or you get at least alerted when that happens. So first, if you don't have an AWS account, head over to portal.aws.amazon.com and just sign up for an account. You'll have to put your credit card details. We'll try to remain as much as possible within the AWS free tier. We get 12 months of free tier, but we will have to go over the free tier to do some big data, namely with Kinesis and other services. So I hope you're ready for that. And we'll set a budget of $10 right now. Once you are in your account, click on the top right and click on my billing dashboard. And within the billing dashboard, we're going to create a budget. So on the left hand side, click on budgets. And then we're going to create a budget. It will be a cost budget. We'll set our budget and the name will be big data course budget. And we'll set it to be monthly and we'll set the budgeted amount to be $10. Then it's going to be a recurring budget. So we don't want to spend more than $10 per month. And we'll tell you how to delete everything at the end of this course. It's going to start in March, 2019. Excellent. Then I click on configure alerts and you can set send an alert based on actual cost or forecasted cost. So it's what you prefer. I'll just send it based on actual cost and I'll say, okay, when I reach 90% of my budgeted amount, please email me at Stefan at example.com, something like that. And then you add your email address and that's it. Then you confirm the budget 
and everything looks good. So you will receive an alarm whenever your budget reaches $10, which is very handy in case you do something wrong. And we'll create this and that's it. We're ready to start the course. All right, let's get started.